Yeah, you know, what an elite win. Uh, first of all, I want to comment on the defense. Uh, what a tremendous job. You know, Coach really challenged them after Northern Illinois, and they responded in a big way. That's a tough offense to stop, and uh, um, a lot of uh, really good wide receivers, a really good quarterback, and the defense did a great job of stepping up. And, um, you know, to, to pitch a shutout and first one in a long time, I'm really happy for those guys. They definitely deserve it. And then also, on the offensive side of the ball, I want to give a huge shout out to the offensive line. What a tremendous job. Um, Jarvion having all those yards does not happen without them. And they've done a tremendous job all season. And um, I think they, oh, I know they don't get enough credit in terms of what they deserve. And um, they're, the, they're the engine of our offense. And they really stepped up and they dominated that football game. And then Jarvion Franklin. And just doing what he does, and I'm learning from his past and continuing to grow as a football player. Um, he did a heck of a job, and I'm just really proud to get the victory. And uh, but now we're moving on, you know, on to the next one, and we got a really tough opponent coming in this weekend. Can you talk a little bit about uh, uh, the offensive line a little bit more in depth? The, often known as the, the thinkers of the group, or the, uh, you know, the can you talk about what their what their personalities are like? Yeah, and, and how they interact with you, the mm -hmm. running backs. And yeah, they're led by Taylor Moten, right tackle, no doubt about it. Um, one of our best football players, just an awesome guy. Guy who came in with me, a fifth year guy who was here with the old regime and stayed around and really uh, bought the roller boat culture. And um, he, he lives and breathes it. And he's the leader of that offensive line. And then John Kenoy, he did a heck of a job calling the game. That's a guy who's come a long way in his development. And um, then, I mean, we could go down the line. Chooks Okorafor has really stepped it up. I mean, they really challenged him after the Illinois game. And he has really stepped up. That's a guy that we needed to step up at left tackle and um, you know, covering my blind side and things like that. And he has taken it to a new level. Jackson Day, left guard, he's kind of the toughness of our offensive lineman. And um, he's the guy that brings it in terms of that aspect. And then a right guard is Luke Tariga, kind of the unknown, but a guy that you know you can always count on Luke Tariga kind of philosophy is he's the guy that's always going to do what you ask of him and more. And um, just really proud of those guys and how they've meshed and how they've gelled. But um, they're continuing to get better, and you know they got to change their best. They got a def uh, Eastern Michigan's got a really tough defensive line. Having O'Connor back is a big test for them, and a lot of those other guys. So um, we got another tough task, and I feel like it's going to be like that every week. And we're going to continue to change our best and focus on how we can get better for this next week. And th that starts with them, them being the engine. Zach, you seem kind of a doormat in the MAC for a little while now. And is there? Is, I know in fans' mind, they're looking at what's going on. It should be an easy win. It's Eastern Michigan. Is there ever a danger that? That would happen in a player's mind? Uh, I mean, we were the doormat three years ago. So, um, you know, and they're kind of doing what we did um, two years ago. And they're really turning their program around. They're a really tough football team. They play really hard, really well coached. That's the first thing that jumps out to me watching the film. And like, like I said, them having O'Connor back, who's the leader of their defense in terms of their defensive side of the ball, which obviously I know more about than the offensive side. But um, he does, I mean, a heck of a job. I remember him two years ago. He was. Um, really tough to play against in the zone read, but also getting after the quarterback. And he's the leader of their defense, and having him back has really set the tone for them. And having Ike Spearman, their middle linebacker, you know, he was out for two seasons, really athletic guy. Um, they're, they're playing tough. They have a lot of confidence. And um, for people to think that it's, you know, going to be just a, a cakewalk, I mean, that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, we really respect them and what they've done. And um, we know that we're going to have a really tough task ahead of us, but we're just focusing on us. And that's all we can do is continue to get better, grow higher, and change our best. We joked about your uh, crazy legs nickname, but two more rushing <laughs> touchdowns this weekend. Um, is it something you find yourself looking for more at this point? And then the <clears throat> second part is specifically that second rushing touchdown off the play fake. Were you, were you looking to run on that one the whole way? Um, you know, I appreciate everybody embracing the crazy legs <laughs> name. I don't know how you guys found out about that. That was supposed to be an in-house thing, but um, I guess I'm embracing it. But you know, I think this year being healthier had a lot to do with it, and I put a lot of emphasis that in that in the off season. So um, I think coaches are the coach uh, Shiraka and Coach Fleck are starting to trust me more running the ball, but also starting to trust myself in certain situations. You know, that second one was not a design run, but you know um, the opportunity was there and I took it. And uh, but it starts with the offensive line and Jarvion and and Bogan and all those guys. People are really got a key on those guys because they make a lot of special plays and. Um, there's just some opportunities here and there for me, and it's my job to take advantage of them when they come about. But, but with the run, you know, you go back two weeks ago, yeah. and you had the, uh, the spin move to the, to the touchdown. I don't know where that, how, where that <laughs> came from, to be I honest mean, with you. I mean, uh, what's going through your head when you're, I mean, obviously, let's get in the end zone and not get killed, but, yeah. but I mean, what's going 
what you just trying to be a ball player just trying to be a ball player make plays and um, do whatever I can to help this football team um, whether that's me throw for a bunch of yards great if that's me hand the ball to Jarvion and carry out my fakes I'll do that too or if that's me running the ball whatever it takes I mean that's what it's all about this team it's not about who gets the stats you know who's uh, at the top of the leaderboard and all those categories blah 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 it's about winning football games and whatever it takes and that's what it's about and it starts with me as the leader of the football team people look to me you know like hey you know, Zach, he doesn't care whether or not he throws for 500 yards or whatever. It's about winning the football game and doing my job and focusing on the details and getting better each and every day and doing whatever it takes, the unselfish nature. And that's how we're going to continue to progress and get better. It's that simple. Eric, um, you um, obviously, Coach talks in glowing phrases about you being CEO ready and this, that, and the other. You've done a good job already with your education, preparing yourself for life after football. That being said, the last couple of years, people have said, well, Zach Carroll, he's a good, efficient uh, game manager, blah, 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 blah. This year, though, Who says that? Yeah, I've heard it. I've All right. Said. I trust him. <laughs> I can find the quote. At any rate, now, we're getting so much more exposure. We've got national television coverage. And people are starting to talk about Zach Carroll being a pro-ability type quarterback. Have you heard from any scouts, or you have you thought at all about maybe playing on Sundays as a life after? Football life after Western University? Yeah, to answer your question, I definitely would like to play football after uh, this, but I am completely focused on this season. And um, I'm completely focused on today and how I can get better today and how I can be the best quarterback for Western Michigan I can be. Whatever happens after that, God willing, I would love to do that, and that's something I'm going to pursue. But my focus is 100% on this season, on this team, and how I can continue to get better. Because after last week, there's a lot of things that I need to improve on. That was not my best game. And um, you know, I get challenged just like everybody else. And I could continue to grow higher and change my best, just like, just like the program demands from everybody else. I am not an exception. That being said, you know, we had gone six straight games without a turnover. Yeah. Um, Dave Ahn lost, had one strip, and, you know, it was, it was what it was. You had an a, a interception that was overturned mm -hmm. for the penalty. Um, can you talk about, I mean, was there any letdown from, you know, going that long and, and, and having the inevitable it's going to happen. You know, it's part of football, but it's our job to continue to limit those opportunities for defenses. And for me, you know, I got to do a better job of taking care of the ball. Um, you know, I got a break there. Coach said I'm living right, which I mean, thank God for that. Um, but, you know, it's all about taking care of the ball. The emphasis is the ball. The ball is the program. And it's as simple as that. And, you know, Davon Tucker, that could have happened to any one of us, but it's our job to continue to focus on the ball and um, to limit those opportunities for defenses. And that's all we can do. But like, you know, it's got to happen. It's part of football. And you know they're on scholarship too. They make some great plays, and um, we got a, a tough defense coming in this week. And you never know. But that's why we're trained to re, to not focus on the result, but to how we the process of working up to that and focusing on the ball and how we can limit those opportunities. Zach, shortly after uh, Purdue fired Hazel, yeah, PJ's name was all over the place. And you're hearing his name with a lot of jobs. Yeah, can that be a distraction to this team? How do you how do you Honestly, it's no distraction to us at all. You see the commitment from him every single day. He's the exact same person. He changes his best. He comes in every day, brings it. Um, if he were to come in and be a different person and maybe be reserved, maybe we'd get worried. But he comes in every single day and brings it. And that outside noise, you know, about Coach Fleck maybe leaving or all the people putting pressure on us and stuff like that, like we are such a tight new group. And we only focus on, you know, us and of the 105 guys, the coaching staff, and everybody that really cares about us and how we can continue to get better. And it's, it starts with him. I mean, he comes in and he brings it every day. And you know, it, that's all we can ask from him. What everybody else says about you know, other jobs, he deserves those jobs, 100%. He's, a, he's the, one of the best coaches in college football. And he's, look what he's done for us. I mean, he deserves to be mentioned in those categories. But you know, he brings it every day. And that's all we can ask. And what everybody else says, it doesn't matter. And to us, he's our football coach. He's here, and he's present, and he's making us work hard. He's making us change his best, but he's also doing the same. I mean, the rest is just outside noise, and we can't control. Zach, um, records are falling left and right every week. It seems like there's new records being set. Every time Corey catches the ball, there's a new record set. But with Jarvie on, with the number of carries he had, it, was there any talk on the sidelines? We've got to get Jarvie another carry. we got to get him the record. No. Or even none of that. Nothing.
Yeah, like I said, it's a very unselfish team. You know, Corey could not get another catch the rest of the season, and if we went out, I mean, he would be happy because it's about the team. It's not a focus on, you know, like how many records we can break or, you know, what our stats can be or this and that, how many points we score. You know, the focus on offense is to score more points than the other team. And whether that's one point or, you know, it's 41, it doesn't matter. And um, that's, it's all about being unselfish and focusing on the process and how we can continue to get better, not focusing on the result. And, you know, stats and records, those are results. We don't focus on that. We focus on the process.